Hey, how you doing, listeners? This is Gina Versa. This is another episode of the Waffle Press podcast. Um, unfortunately, Diego was unable to join us this week. He's a bit busy, so it's just me. So if you don't, um, if you prefer Diego over me, well, this is the show to uh, to watch. But you're stuck with me anyway. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, we have a guest on, uh, someone that's been on uh, the show before. He's a friend of the show and uh, making his triumphant return is Chris Gleasy. Chris, how are you? Doing well. How about you, Gene? I'm doing, I'm doing good. I'm, uh, you know, vaccinated. I'm, uh, you know, wearing a mask, staying healthy, um, getting some new Hawaiian shirts. There you go. Yeah, I know you're a fan of them. I, I did. Well, I'm wearing the Hawaiian t-shirt today. Not oh, okay. The, not the button up. You know, oh, okay. I'm at home. I, I don't need to dress up yet. Gotcha. Well, <laughs> this is this is like unbuttoned, so it's like casual. Oh, yeah. Definitely, <laughs> definitely get that casual vibe. But yeah, I think I think I've like uh, I think I got your Hawaiian shirt style from you. I think I got that from yeah. you. <laughs> well, it's something that started off as a joke. Like I started wearing it every Friday as a casual Friday day, and then little by little, it just turned into like, wow, I have a whole wardrobe of Hawaiian shirts now. So it's all I wear. So, nice, but, nice you know they're fun they're casual there yeah, you go. more like I, I i enjoy a drink so yeah yeah definitely um but cool cool um but yeah chris dude it's awesome to um have you on again yeah i think it's been like four years since your last uh appearance so that's cool yeah yeah you know well, you know i've actually been wanting to maybe poke you or diego about this because you know, uh, one of my favorite movies of all time is Black Hat. And I know Diego loves Black Hat. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, and I, I recently got a sealed copy of Movie Hackers over there. I have on oh, my shrine. Dang, yeah, so, you got to pull that out if you have the chance. <laughs> yeah, so, to play. you know, I, I feel like we should definitely like do a montage of like, you know, hacker movies and some of the crazy sequences they use to hack into, um, mm-hmm. you know, computers and how unrealistic they are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's great to have you on. Um, Chris, um, can you tell us how you've been doing? Which, what have you been doing for the, you know, last uh, since you last appeared? And yeah, just kind of how you're doing during this time right now. Sure. Uh, you know, since, you know, it's been a while, but, you know, um, I work in video games. Um, I uh, produce video game hardware and accessories. Like I've done stuff for Xbox, uh, stuff for PlayStation, Nintendo. Um, been working on that with various companies, you know, I used to work at Hyperkin and then I helped out another company called Playmaji. They were working on a retro console. Um, and then I went to and assisted another company called controller gear. Um, probably the most recent thing they did was, um, there was a Mandalorian controller that they did with Xbox as a collaboration, um, and with Lucas. Um, and now I am working with Monoprice. Uh, to produce and develop their gaming brand so they're going into like gaming monitors gaming mice and keyboards so currently helping them out right now with that and you know it's been an interesting time you know been working from home for the past year so a lot is a lot has changed in the sense of like the way people do work now like you used to have to go to an office and meet with people and now it's like oh no I can only talk to you like I only have to talk to you for an hour a day and you know that's kind of it yeah it's slightly more productive I would or more productive I would imagine it is actually there's a lot less uh a lot less filler yeah yeah and then you know who, who wanted you know in an office like being around like people all day or, or by a water cooler um you know pretending to like make conversation uh exactly you know like you know, less less uh less uh What's nonsense, I guess. <laughs> I don't know about you, but, uh, you know, working from home, it, it also feels like I actually work more without even realizing it. Cause like, oh, yeah. you know, cause you know, I'm home and it's like, oh yeah, I can start working like at six, seven in the morning. I just woke up, had my coffee. And then, you know, little, little by little, you're like, wow, I've been working, you know, instead of starting at eight or nine, it's like, oh, I'm starting at six or seven now, just because I'm relaxed and yeah. I get a jump start on things. Yeah, so. definitely. Dude, that's really cool. Yeah. And then, yeah, no, it's uh, been really cool just uh, following your trajectory and, you know, seeing all the awesome work you're doing, going from, Thanks. yeah, from like, you know, previous company you work for to like, yeah, you're like, a, you're like, a, what's the Mandalorian himself? You're like a freelance bounty hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much going around, you know, spreading the, the joy of gaming to where I can. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you've, uh, so I did uh, want to bring this up. You've done a lot of VR work, right? Definitely. Uh, what, can you tell us? Loss of what can you tell uh, us about, about VR? VR? Yeah. 
well, you know, VR is up if you want to hear it that way. Like, you know, because of the pandemic, more people are turned on to it. You know, I think this was like the one time there was the most VR headsets that were ever sold, you know, for like for Facebook. So, and, you know, a lot of people were into it. They wanted to, uh, you know, obviously get out of their apartment or their house, wherever it is that they're staying during the pandemic and like visit other worlds and feel immersed. So, uh, you know, big things came out like Beat Saber, um, some other like experiences came out. Like I know they're doing a Five Nights at Freddy in VR and stuff like that. So a lot of cool stuff that's going out there. Um, And I think it also gave people an opportunity to experience sports for the first time in VR with like VR cameras and stuff like that. So, you know, even though sports was canceled and there was no live games, you can pop on your Oculus and you can go to an NBA game, you know, for free. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's the way of the future. We're all, mm-hmm. It's weird. We're living in like a ready player one world. <laughs> <All right. laughs> almost, almost. We're yeah. almost there. Yeah. So. I just wish, yeah. I just need like the, like the boot suit or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you can start getting all the feeling, but you know, I always wondered myself, like would people actually want to be that immersed where like, you know, I always felt like the the joy of video games was like I can do stuff because of like the lack of consequence. You know, I'm not gonna like cut my arm off or something like that. I wonder if people are gonna want to feel that sensation if there was a bodysuit, like you're playing Mortal Kombat and like you get uppercut. Like, do you actually want to feel that? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once, once like emotions and stuff, <laughs> right? Once like feelings, but. Yeah, I I, uh, I need to get my VR headset for my PlayStation Five because that's like, yeah, it's been on it's been on my uh, like I guess Best Buy sort of app, and I just need to check it out. But when some other money comes in, for sure. Well, the the new PS Five VR headset should be coming out probably within the next year or so. So, uh, should I wait though? <laughs> Wait, I would, I would, I would advise to wait. All right, all right. You know, the, well, the PS VR headset is cool and all, but it's pretty low spec. Okay. Okay. This is um no this is good because it's like this is on air like advice <laughs> but no yeah. i'm down um but yeah um i know you're a big movie fan you mentioned uh you mentioned that uh you know that uh set that you got uh what uh movies have you been watching recently keeping you busy Ooh. during the pandemic uh well of course anything that's been coming on hbo max early i've been watching like you know i saw the snyder cut um, oh nice did you watch it in one sitting or like I watched it I watched it twice and both times were in one sitting so wow I've only yeah. watched it once in one sitting and I had to do like an intermission <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah because I, I watched it uh by myself and my wife she was out on a business trip and then she came home and she's like oh I want to watch the Snyder Cut and I'm like you know I don't want to say tell her that I rewatched it without <laughs> her so I just had to kind of like save face and just watch it again with her okay. have you have you told her that you you saw it before yeah okay okay i was like don't want her to find out on the podcast <laughs> <laughs> no yeah i i told her like yeah i watch it she's like, okay uh, but that was after the fact so okay you're all good you're all good yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah um but yeah uh, any listeners want to check out our uh podcast that we did about the snyder cut that's on the youtube channel I'm just promoting that <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i also saw uh lords of chaos recently uh was with uh, Macaulay Culkin's brother, and it was uh, a story of um, uh, black metal band Mayhem and oh, okay. like the jumpstart of, of the Norwegian black metal scene. So that was nice. pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. I so, that sounds cool. I'm not like I I I, I cannot get into Norwegian death metal, but like <laughs> seems cool. Yeah, I definitely would recommend it to anyone that's interested in metal or like listens to metal at all. Like it's a cool sub story of like the culture and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I listen to uh, black metal on occasion. So, you know, it helps you get into the mood, especially when you're in a serious writing session or something like that. Nice. Okay. Yeah. All for it. Any any other recommendations? Uh, Let's see. What else have I watched recently? Or like that I remember watching that I really enjoyed. Um, from a movie standpoint, nothing else has really stood out too much. Um, hmm. yeah. Gotta, gotta yeah. have that list ready I'm, to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think the other movie that I saw recently uh, actually was, 
actually wasn't a movie it was a tv show i saw the, i saw uh the servant on apple tv oh okay i was gonna say you know it doesn't need to be a movie like yeah it's, uh, okay so yeah, I, I, mm-hmm. the servant was pretty good uh well it's uh it just finished season two and you know uh it's you know an m night uh Shyamalan film and you know it's or a series and it was pretty interesting it's pretty ins and outs i feel like every episode is just a new cliffhanger and just keeps on building off every other cliffhanger off it's uh, just i guess typical of his movies but i still have no idea how it's going to end or where it's going because just when you think you figure it out it's like oh great another plot twist yeah dude he's he's been on a roll though that guy like has this like awesome like career renaissance not to say like any of his movies were like terrible but like you know that's cool to like see people like coming around to him again you know Mm -hmm. exactly yeah but that's all i would really highly recommend like what i really like you know of course i saw like ted lasso <laughs> nice uh, yeah everyone looks I, I really enjoyed that one it, it was a nice clean palette because you know during the pandemic we would watch my wife and i we would watch like the boys on amazon oh nice and in you know ted lasso was just kind of like a palette cleanser for us afterwards <laughs> after seeing something like yeah. so like disgusting and like you know horrible on human nature love so. the boys though that's it's a great show me and nick talked about it on the podcast oh, yeah. a few times so. nick loves that show so <laughs> um but awesome yeah, i'm yeah. not surprised <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know we all yeah you know nick <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, uh, oh, cool. but yeah i have uh, i got some ready to go <laughs> that I like you just, um first off the last blockbuster interesting documentary on netflix okay i'd recommend that that's like profiling the last blockbuster chain that's open that's uh, open and like just a random state and it's just like how it managed to stay open and like the cultural relevance of blockbuster but then also like how like it wasn't that good to begin with and kind of like it's like if you ever saw it's a great documentary i forgot who it's by but like it's i think it was on netflix like enron it was a documentary on enron it was called like uh-huh. uh, smartest guys in the room it's like the <laughs> smartest guys in the room for blockbuster because it's like how did this chain fail because i'm not sure if you heard but like at one point they were gonna like buy they they had a chance to buy netflix <laughs> blockbuster did. no i did not know that yeah they did and they talk about they're like well you know we already kind of do this service we should just do our own and it's like that was like that was like the new co- that was like one of the worst business decisions since like new coke <laughs> <laughs> that, they, they really chronicle went what what went wrong because it's like just the late fees like how they treated their customer things like that their membership and it's like huh you know it's interesting because it's like this last the last blockbuster store it's really beloved but then you look at like the complicated legacy so it's i'd recommend that okay uh nobody i'm not sure if you heard of that one has the uh the uh bob odenkirk the dude He's just this, yeah. uh, this John Wick, but with uh, just like, it's like if John Wick was your dad. <laughs> you know, I was planning on watching that movie like in theaters and I, that's okay. the only reason why I haven't seen it, but I've been wanting to watch it. I heard it's good though. I've heard good it, things about it. It is good. It is awesome. It's just like, it's like a, it's like John Wick. Like, it's just dumb. It's like action. And, um, you know, I love Bob Odenkirk, you know, he's a, yeah. Yeah. Like you can't say nothing bad about him, you know? <laughs> I think I read once that like he's like the best salesman for his own career, like because he just has that persona. Yeah, yeah, he's like better call Saul, yeah. but like a better person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, Vanguard, I'd recommend with Jackie Chan. It's like Jackie Chan's Agents of Shield, basically. Okay, okay. It's a it's a movie from uh, China. It's on the Red Box, and um, yeah, um, you know, it's cool that. You know, because again, Jackie Chan did like American movies, but you know, before that, he had a like amazing like he's like one of the biggest Chinese action stars. And to see like you know, so probably some people weren't aware of it, or they were just aware through his like American movies. To see like his uh, the movies that made him come around here is really cool. Like, if you've seen like um, what's that movie? It's a uh, where he's a cop. Okay. Yeah. Um. Is it uh, um. Yeah. Why? It? It's like one of his like biggest movies. It's a uh, police story. Oh yeah, yeah. Pol- there's a police story and like yeah, just um, yeah, he's he's yeah, Jake Chen's great. Um, don't want, you know, can't go wrong there. So recommend that. Um, couple other ones for you before we go on to the main event. 
How about like uh, Godzilla versus Kong? I did. I I love that. Love Godzilla versus Kong. I've seen it four times now. So. You know, like uh, mm-hmm. for as a movie, it was just like it was just something that was like you know. I think they knew what it was going to be, and they mm-hmm. just ran with it. Like you know, I wasn't going to watch it for like an amazing story. I was going to watch <laughs> no, it for yeah. some monsters just to you know beat each other up, and exactly. it, it did what it did. I, that's what so. I tell people. It's like I don't know like what you know because people have like okay, there's you know criticisms, and you know you don't want to like shoo away criticisms because you know that's yeah. bad in itself but like some of it is in bad faith where it's like why would you watch it for the humans like this is not yeah. <laughs> what you watch these movies for um yeah you know like it, and the original godzilla the original king kong yeah they had good drama but like you know the whole franchise it's just about monsters so mm-hmm. and you know yeah i think the only godzilla movie that i think it took like people serious was like a shin godzilla you know, mm-hmm. I yeah, I, I I rewatched that, and that was just a great movie in general. It's by you know? uh, it's by the genius uh, Anno, uh, was it Hidaki Anno, who created Evangelion. Um, mm-hmm. Our friend Terrence loves that show. We might be starting a Evangelion <laughs> podcast, so we'll talk more about yeah. him. But we'll see. I've been I've, I've been meaning to get into that, and I'm just oh, like, I, I haven't started it. I haven't got into it, but, but it's just one of the series that I want to start. So. Oh, dude, it's it's awesome. But you know, maybe one day. Yeah. Well, you know, just <laughs> watch this twenty six episodes on Netflix. But yeah, definitely check it out one day. Did you? Oh, uh, did did you watch Coming to America too? I did. I did w- see that. Uh, <laughs> it was not great. Uh, yeah. I. It was cool to see Eddie Murphy back and he, him and the second that character and those cast, but it's like that movie has like. Like it, it's one of those like with those like tropes of bad editing in like a comedy movie because it's like that thing where that's like they hold on people improv and it's like it interrupts the flow and then to like I guess spoilers but like that movie it's like they introduce like all right here's the reintroduction to the to Eddie Murphy's character the you know the prince now we're going to introduce mm-hmm. like his son we're introducing his then we're going to introduce that there's like a threat in West in Wesley Snipes character. And then we're going to like introduce this and it's like all happening, like one after the other. And it's like, it's so much going on. It's yeah. so weird. Yeah. I was pretty disappointed as, as a fan of the first one. Yeah. You know? Me and my dad and love the first one. <laughs> same. It's a, it's a movie that my dad showed me and he's like, Oh, it's like, it's amazing. Like growing up and yeah, it was a great movie. It's, I don't know if it was more of a nostalgia factor, but like I was talking to my brother about it and he's like, you know, Chris, what were you expecting? It's pretty PG-13. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did your dad like it, though? No, he didn't like oh, it. Oh, okay. I think my dad liked it, but he'll like anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't listen. <laughs> but no, I love my dad. He's great. He's great. Yeah. But uh, I guess two other films before we talk about Mortal Kombat, which is the main event for today. Um, I'd sure. really recommend uh, Psycho Goreman, which is uh, it's a movie that came out through Shudder um diego like hated it but i loved it so we're gonna like promote that psycho gorman which is like it's this independent film it's by a like a canadian um sort of production team um these they did the void uh the director steven um i'm gonna butcher his name konsky if i did steven please don't get mad um he did leprechaun returns and yeah they just do really weird interesting stuff so this have you heard of this movie chris haven't psycho psycho gorman is basically like like if one of the monsters from power rangers so you know like those weird things was like Mm -hmm. so like zed or someone was even Mm -hmm. more evil and even more bloodthirsty and he's like uh he comes to earth and he's trying to destroy the earth but this like little girl has this amulet that controls him Mm -hmm. that falls off and he basically has to live with this like suburban family for like for like a year or something and it's just like it's so weird it's so unique like it's just such it's a dumb movie like you know it's it's dumb that you know it knows what it is kind of like kong versus godzilla Mm -hmm. and it's just like just violence it's just you know it's just gross they like melt people like they're just like it's like an 80s like i guess like hellraiser or something and it's just but it's wholesome too it's about this like it's about psycho gorman who's this alien conqueror but then it's also about this like nice family who are having like some problems like the the mom who's mad at you know mm-hmm. having issues with the dad the the kids don't get along and everything and like 
he really brings them together, even though he destroys the whole world. But at least the family's okay. Right. Well, that's all that matters, right? right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I really. So another uh, movie I saw was Sound of Metal. Sound? Oh, okay. I love Sound of uh, Metal. That's I hope. That I really works. enjoyed it too. It, it, it was a good movie. Um, between that one and the other one I saw was uh, Nomadland. Um, oh, that one's that one's uh, as of this recording. The Oscars are tomorrow, Sunday. Yeah, exactly. So I, I'm I'm up there with you. I hope Sound of Metal wins. I, I really enjoyed that movie. It was yeah. something that was pretty interesting, especially like uh, like my wife, her um, her uh, her niece and her sister. They have uh, they're 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 also deaf. Yeah. So for her, it kind of hit a little little bit home on what like what it means to like not hear and stuff like that. So. Um, so yeah, it was a it, it was a good movie. I I highly enjoyed it. Like it was a little interesting, like watching it in that sense of like uh, I I was kind of wondering like what the because uh, I don't know about you, but I kind of felt like Ruben was just being punished the whole time. Like yeah, that that movie's you know um, it's very interesting. It takes like you know because I think Chloe Zhao is like a brilliant storyteller, um, and it, you know kind of like Sound of Metal work it's not a traditional sort of like drama where, you know, you think where the movie is going to go, like, oh, she's going to like reunite with her family and it goes that way. Or like, you think this love interest is going to go somewhere and it does, but it goes like in an unexpected way. And it's just such a correct, brilliant way to like tell a story. Yeah, it was. And I think that's why I liked it so much is because like what you said, like I thought I was going to go one way and then it's like, nope, it didn't. And yeah. I was okay with that. It was just like, cause that's just how a real story goes. <laughs> yeah. That's how life is. Yeah. Those movies were very like representative of life and um, yeah, the Oscars, we'll see what happens. Um, maybe I'll make an Oscar prediction that no man land will win. <laughs> you know, <There> you <laughs> aren't we glad that no man land won? <laughs> no, it's not ed- this podcast isn't edited. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, I don't, We'll definitely, yeah, we recommend all those movies. Um, probably not coming to America too, but if you want to see it, yeah, okay, go ahead. Don't recommend it. Don't. Yeah, <laughs> maybe for maybe for nostalgia's sake, just to see like what 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 happens. But that that's all I can recommend on it. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, so I guess we're on to our main event um, on HBO Max. Mortal Kombat released this weekend. Um, one of the films that are early access to subscribers, and it's also in theaters. So if you you know if you if you feel safe and comfortable and you're vaccinated, go go in the movies to see it. Um, but the uh, Mortal Kombat, you know, the, this is like a franchise, a video game, uh, plat you know platform arcade game, what have you. That's kind of bit like played a big role in like I don't know at least my childhood. You know, I'm not sure about yours. Um, Chris, what was your uh, what was the first Mortal Kombat game that you played? Uh, the first Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat. Oh, th- you know self-titled you know nice. okay uh and actually the first uh console or not even console the first thing i played it on was actually on a pc uh back really? in the day when there wasn't windows it was called dos so nice. uh, um funny story the reason why i played it on dos was actually because my mom didn't let me have the game mm-hmm. and she didn't let me have the game because obviously it was violent and it was in the news about how violent it was. Yeah. And my dad saw that I really, really wanted the game. And I had a Super Nintendo, but mm-hmm. you know, if I were to play with the Super Nintendo, that means I wanted to play on the TV that everyone's looking at. Uh, so, mm. so my dad was like, you know, if we get it on DOS or on the PC, you could play like in the office and no one's gonna know that you're playing it. Okay. So my dad, nice. my dad kind of just my dad kind of hooked me up and Dang. he was like, all right, just just you can go play it, just don't tell your mom type of mentality yeah. your dad with the save right there exactly so that's my that's like for me like till this day that's one of the reasons why i still play mortal Kombat. it's like i have this tie with it and like not only like because it's a fun game but i was like oh you know my dad like is what kind of like gave me this access to this game and it's like it just changed you know what i want to do that's why i work in video games you know to, yeah. to this day so yeah oh that's a awesome story right there yeah um how about you how about you what was the first uh first Mortal Kombat you played or that you can remember yes that I could consciously remember is probably Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance I know I oh, played wow. a, yeah I think I played on my cousin's PlayStation so okay. I think she had a copy but yeah I was just playing that and uh, I don't know I think me and my cousins just like just beat the shit out of each other on that game um 
among other games. But yeah, that really stood out because it's a game that you could like get really into. You could play with like your family. You could play with like, you know, your brother or something. And like, it's like a bonding, I guess, event, right? Yep. Right? Yeah, it's like this bonding thing because um, it's like two player. And yeah, it's just, it was really like fun. It was cool to just like, I don't know. I don't know if I won, but I, I beat them up a few times on it. And yeah, and I played, you know, played for like, like all, you know, all night and everything. And it was, uh, yeah, it was great. Great, uh, yeah. great experience. The same. It was just one of those experiences like with that I would have with my brother or my cousin. We would just play Mortal Kombat all day, all night. And, you know, it was just something that we just did. And it was something that you would talk about with your friends. So there was just like this communal thing that you would do with like when you went back to school or whoever it is that you were hanging out with in the neighborhood it's just like oh did you like you know beat this character did you finally get this far you know did you know that this game has a cheat code like do you have the cheat yeah. codes the you know prima all, strategy pre-internet you yeah. pre-internet stuff also it was just something that you all, everyone shared and everyone wrote down so it was it was a really fun experience for me at least and you Definitely. know I, I grew up with the super nintendo so like oh. it was kind of like when mortal kombat 2 came out it was just like, at the time, you know, games back then were super expensive. So yeah. my, How much, and my like only hope the, of playing it was finding it at Blockbuster. Yeah. Just circling back to Blockbuster. <laughs> yeah, but, it all goes back to Blockbuster. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, did you ever play the arcade game? Like, like, at, like, I, cause I know you grew up in, uh, yeah, I grew up around like this area, um, Nickel Nickel or like Chuck E. Cheese. Do you remember Nickel Nickel? If anyone's I remember Nickel Nickel. I actually didn't go to Nickel Nickel that often because oh. I because I grew up in Kiko, oh, Kiko okay. Rivera. So actually the closest like big arcade um was actually in South Almani uh at Golfland. Right oh I, I went to that one. Yeah. If anyone I think it's still there, right? It's not. It got knocked oh. down now. They oh, built houses it. there. I know there's another golf land, it's like in Norwalk, right? off the uh, off the 605 yeah i had a lot of fun memories yeah. but i was just gonna say because I, I love nickel nickel that's like one of if i was a millionaire that's the one thing i'm gonna bring back is nickel nickel <laughs> to, to preface this nickel nickel was an arcade that was in like whittier um there was some other like around the la county and it was like a arcade game so it was like it was a little bit nicer than like say like chuck e cheese it wasn't like as like packed and like uncleanly <laughs> But like it was a you could play every single game, not for a quarter, but for a nickel. So like yep. economically, probably you're probably having people save money, right? I would imagine. Yeah, like the the whole theory was that like it's not costing you a quarter to play, but you're gonna end up putting more nickels into the machine. Yes, because it's you, like it's only a nickel. <laughs> yeah, you're playing more, yeah. Better than so, uh Charles Entertainment Cheese. Yep. And you know, they wanted you to be there. Like if you're playing games longer, that means you're probably buying concessions and you're buying soda, popcorn, whatever it is that they sold there. So, you know, it was a good business model. Yeah. Oh good. Well, it was good enough until it until it wasn't, I guess. Until yeah. like the home consoles really killed the arcades. Yeah. But yeah, I would play Mortal Kombat 2 in um in arcades. I would play there. I would also play like at, you know, random like burger spots like uh pizza mania and whittier used to have a mortal Kombat machine yeah and oh, i used to play there yeah so how about you gene like you know do you, which game do you remember playing in the arcade was it two three uh i i think it was like two um yeah i remember it was like two and uh oh man i'm trying to remember like what which one specifically but like I'd probably go to like Peter Piper Pizza or Nickel Nickel. Oh, I remember Peter Piper. <laughs> yeah, Peter Piper. They're all they're all gone. All these arcades, like we're such like two thousands that like, you know, these are like these are like deep cuts. So like, I hope someone appreciates this because like, those are some good memories. I wish I don't know if arcade could come back. Do you remember uh, DZ Discovery Zone? No, I, I don't think I went to that one. Oh, okay, so it was like the the rival of Chuck E. Cheese and um uh, their thing was um of course they had arcade games but it had like this really crazy like uh last warrior obstacle course that you can run through so that was their that was their big shtick but you know other than that like uh, the only arcades i remember really were golf land and you know going to pizza mania e eating there and then of course just playing mortal kombat so yeah, pizza mania i think they changed names now or i don't know if it's the same owners but yeah yeah i don't know have, uh, have nolan bushnell like buy out nickel nickel 
<laughs> bring it back. On well, I think uh, Nolan Bushnell's son. He's he has his own arcade business startup. Oh, does he? <laughs> and it's kind of like a kind of a hipster like furniture looking like you know fancy furniture looking arcade thing that you can mount on your wall. Mm-hmm. And they have a subscription service, and it's like you pay like ten fifteen dollars a month, and then there's always new games inside your arcade cabinet. Nice. Uh, so, have you, yeah. Did you ever meet uh, Mr. Bushnell? Uh, I want to say I met him once, like maybe at E3, but like oh, it was okay. more like indirect than anything. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so I guess kind of going on that topic of Mortal Kombat, what was your favorite, who was your main for Mortal Kombat? Like what was the go-to character? Well, I still play Mortal Kombat to this day. Like I still play 10-11. Those are good, um, yeah. Uh, but back then I used to play Sub-Zero a lot. Now, not so much. Um, I, <laughs> at, the, at the moment I use Cabal and I use Nightwolf. Nice. Um, I really enjoy Liu Kang and Johnny Cage. I like Sub-Zero. I love Sub-Zero. I think Scorpion's really good, too. But I think I would probably main... I think I would main Sub-Zero. I'm like kind of... That's kind of a basic answer, but I like that guy. (laughs) No, he's good. Like, you know, he's a really good fighter. Like, you know, he has distance and he can fight up close. That's, you know, that's what he can do. Uh, I started using, like, Cabal and Nightwolf when they were featured in Mortal Kombat 3 just because they were like some of the newer characters and you know they were interesting but Mm -hmm. also because like you know Cabal had this really cool um effect and you know it's he displays it in the movie um like he has like this like flash like super speed um effect to him and what he would do is like he would able to like chase you around and like just spin you around like crazy and you get disoriented for like so many seconds that you could just like kind of just kill someone if you just landed correctly so yeah he was he was, he was kind of a cheat yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> you could spam a lot with that i would imagine exactly yeah and same thing with nightwolf nightwolf he can like you can like start at one side of the map and then he can be able to like just teleport straight across and hit you with one blow and yeah. it was just kind of an overkill so yeah exactly um but yeah like um yeah great characters to play with um what do you think like the impact of Mortal Kombat was on in in the fighting game genre, in your opinion? Um, you know, it was and I think it it was something that was much needed, but I also feel like um it was also if, if they did I also kind of feel like if they didn't do it, someone else was gonna do it. Yeah. Because um you know, I, I feel like uh, when you looked at the fighting scene of what was there, a lot mm-hmm. of the most notorious fighting games, they came out of Japan. You yeah. know, you had, you know, like even like SNK, like the Neo Geo machines, like they had like, you know, um, their own form of fighting games. But then you had Street Fighter and stuff like that. And it's just like, you know, those were all like, yeah, there were fighting games, but I think it was like Mortal Kombat, like really kind of like forced them to like pay attention and like, like oh, oh the americans are making a fighting game now and it's ultra violent and <laughs> yeah and i think the market spoke on that and like the controversy from that is like what allowed it to echo and i think it forced other companies that made fighting games to kind of look at like wow we can we can do this and we have to like up our games because you know the blood sells yeah yeah make it more bloody yeah i would say the blood for sure but i think yeah there's like you know really made other companies like up the ante or like improve their game i guess so yeah. to say. and there was a, and there's a lot of companies that actually started copying what mortal kombat did with like the photorealism that they incorporated because i think what allowed mortal kombat to like even get to its status is the fact that you know they used real actors and yeah. they took photos of them and they you know they low res them to mm-hmm. run on the machines and it's like That's... they made it look ultra realistic for yeah. its time that's so cool i was like it's like almost like a video game version of like all the ralph bakshi cartoons or animation style of like rotoscoping (laughs) yep and and, you know like you had companies like uh rare like they did killer instinct and they did the exact same thing except they used you know claymation based you know uh characters but it was just something that was going on and it worked so yeah oh man i miss uh nintendo era era of rare (laughs) Oh, I hate yeah. to dunk on someone, but <laughs> yeah, I you know like uh, I don't know if you heard recently that they're even doing like there was like you know a Golden Eye uh, remaster that was leaked that was in the works by by them really? and it, it just got scrapped at the last moment, so it never came out. Oh, don't tell uh, 
Justin that. <laughs> Justin's well aware of it, actually. Oh, okay. uh, he has it. He already has it, and he can play it, but I don't think he can because he, he, you know, he has a Mac. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I'm, as I'm recording on a Mac, dang. <laughs> Got to tell us about your PC pedestal. <laughs> no, no, I, I like I like Apple, you know, but, you okay. know, PC gaming, you know, just where it's at. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, any any closing thoughts just on the franchise? Um, what do you think makes it so brilliant? What makes it so brilliant is that, uh, at least from, like, my interpretation is that, like, I don't know who was running their marketing. I really don't. I'm not 100% sure how it was done, but uh i to this day i still remember some of the stuff like mortal kombat meant to a lot of kids and you know there was a lot of urban legends behind mortal kombat like yeah. you know they're like oh like you know if you're on this level and you hit them a certain day at a certain time like with the moon on this position um you can actually hit them like across the map or like into the spiky part or the spike area and it's just like that was never true like that was never a thing in the game but there was just so many urban urban legends and myths on what you were able to do in Mortal Kombat because a lot of what was available in Mortal Kombat was stuck behind, you know, strategy guide level information. And no one was going to pay like the 20 to $40 to get these books back then. So a lot of it was just made up and it just helped push Mortal Kombat to more people of like, oh, like, you know, I'm going to sit here all day and I'm going to play this game and I'm going to figure out all the secrets when in reality, it's just like, yeah. There was no other secrets than whatever was in the strategy guide. Like there's no, yeah, yeah. you know, there's no hidden level that you don't know about. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I agree. So. Yeah. But no, I think you summed it up really brilliantly. So I guess um, now we're talking about the main event, Mortal Kombat movie. So uh, this came out. Um, I, I think this is like very divisive. I, I was, I was very surprised um, for an Mortal Kombat movie, but like the fandom's like pretty, pretty intense. Um, I guess let's just go right into it. Um, what were your thoughts? Um, you know, I think as someone that still plays Mortal Kombat to this day and has played almost from what I can from what I know, like almost every iteration of Mortal Kombat, even those little uh crappy tiger electronic versions of Mortal Kombat. Um, you know, I thought the movie was fun. It was an entertaining movie. Uh, you know, kind of like what we all expect from at least what I expected from the movie. It was you know, you had characters that were more close to their video game costume, something a little bit more uh, resembling to what maybe kids may see in the games that they're playing right now. And, and, you know, it was bloody, it was violent. There was a lot of cool fight scenes. And that's that, like, you know, just like the game, like, I don't think people are playing the Mortal Kombat game to um, actually, like, play the story mode and, like, find out what happens in, you know, Outworld. Yeah, yeah. So. story mode's, like, it's not bad. You know, it's, it's not, not it's not the greatest, but like you know, I mean, it's not terrible. I guess that's kind of you like know? the movie, yeah. Yeah, it's just like you know, it's there, you know, but it's it, it was a good time. I enjoyed it. Like you know, I'm gonna probably go watch it again. You know, I want to see it in theaters, so uh, just to experience it because you know, yeah, watching it at home is fun, but like you know, I I definitely want to experience it like on the big screen. Um, you know, some of the at least from what I remember from the story, like in terms of like previous games, some of the story is a little different than I expected. I, I was, I, I would think that the story would be a little bit more closer to the video game lore. Yeah. It was a little, it was a little off for the most part. Yeah. So. And uh, pre-warning to any viewers, uh, full spoilers at this point. Cause it's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> if, if you haven't seen it, it's, you know, I don't know why you're listening to this, but um, uh, yeah, some of the changes that they made to like the mythology of the characters, like Scorpion, and correct me if I'm wrong, but like I thought, like in the movie, in the game at least, like Scorpion and Sub Zero, they're like they're both from like Japan, right? Like, and they're just different clans. Yes, that's correct. They're they're just uh, opposite clans. That's correct. Yeah, and they made it like kind of like uh, Scorpion's Japanese, right? He is Japanese, and then they made that the Lin Kuei, which was uh, Sub Zero's uh, clan, and they made it seem like it was more of a Chinese, uh, yeah, because they they switched back and forth between Chinese and Japanese language. Right. So. Yeah, that was that was interesting. But yeah, I don't know. And then too, like like sub like uh, Scorpions, like bloodline is like this huge thing, and then like you know, um, like Sub Zero is like I guess it was the original Sub Zero, but like he's very like like such a like villain in this movie like i was just like kind of taken aback 
actually felt like he was more of the villain than Shang Tsung. Shang Tsung, yeah, like he was like yeah. the primary antagonist. So these yeah. are interesting changes again. Like you know, it's like adapting anything. Like you don't want to, you know, keep. You know, you could you could change it like the like friggin', you know, in um, Iron Man three, the Mandarin twist. Like you know, as long as there's a good story, you know, mm-hmm. like the I don't know if it was like some of these changes were a little too much, but like. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I was actually also surprised that, like, you know, for, for you know the main protagonist, that they just made up a character. You they know, just, Cole. Yeah. Like Cole does Cole. not exist at all in the Mortal Kombat universe. So I was surprised that, you know, they didn't go with a uh, more standardized hero like Liu Kang or yeah, or Johnny, Johnny Cage. Cage. Johnny Cage, yeah. You know, and and spoiler, if you haven't seen the movie, they're obviously hinting at a sequel where, you know, Johnny Cage will make hopefully an appearance. So. yeah spoilers spoilers yeah <laughs> uh but you know i was reading an article about specifically about johnny cage in the movie about him not being in the movie and uh the director uh was saying that the reason why he didn't want to include johnny cage in this movie is because uh johnny cage is actually too much of a of a big time star um not only it, like like in the movie so he was worried that it would be too much about him rather than the story that he wanted to tell about Cole. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's like such a, that's such a, per, eh, I guess that's a perfect answer. It's like Johnny Cage is too big for this movie. We need Johnny Cage in like the next one. But I don't know about you, but I, I kind of felt like Kano in the movie was kind of like at some point, like for a good part of the movie, he's overshadowing like Cole. A little bit, in yeah. The movie. Did you so, like Cole, I guess? Because I guess Cole no. was like controversial. <laughs> Cole is no, controversial, like Cole. apparently. I'm like, really? Huh. Uh, I I didn't like his character set. Like, uh, you know, I I would have very much preferred like if they went with like a champion from like the actual game series as the protagonist. I, I you know, I don't know what they're gonna do with it, but you know, um, needless to say, I it it was still an entertaining movie. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, um but you know it was actually kind of interesting that the way they did uh the take on the way you get you know you know the the, the big thing in the in the uh, mortal Kombat series is like some of these people that are from earth realm they have superpowers mm-hmm. and Basically. you know like you know like like luke kang you know like you know he's able to project fireballs uh you know uh like how are these earthlings like why do they have this power and like you know they reference it as a as an arcana which is like their way of like transferring power mm-hmm. and it was, it's kind of interesting like the way that they um i guess you would say uh how how an, someone from earth realm would get their powers because you had uh sonia blade for example in the movie she did not have powers at all throughout the whole the whole movie up until like the last little bit of it and mm-hmm. you know she the way you get this arcana is that you have to actually defeat another champion that has arcana and yeah. their and their powers transfer to you so that was kind of interesting that i don't know i guess that's how it works or it's passed on through lineage like uh you know you find out that cole is related to someone and you know he gets his arcana from you know being uh you know being related to someone that are also yeah. has it. so so yeah it was, it was an interesting part of the mythology um yeah it's definitely interesting yeah you could say that um <laughs> i don't know how i feel about this movie like i was watching it and i'm like well at least there's a movie but like i wouldn't go so far as saying it was bad it was just like it did take a lot of like unexpected things that i might have disagreed with i guess as a fan and i just felt it was like <sighs> it wasn't like controversial like it didn't have like like man of steel is controversial because like he snaps mm-hmm. a neck but like, I was yeah. just like, huh, like these are interesting changes that they made. I don't think I agree with them, but at least like, okay, well, I'm just going to like watch just to like take it as it is and then kind of like make my own opinion. Well, the the way that the movie was developed, I, I kind of got this um, vibe. I don't know if you'll agree with me, but I, you definitely, it definitely feels like they're trying to set it up for like a, a universe type of uh, series where it's just like, they could definitely pump out more movies or tv shows in regards to it like lots of side stories like um uh in one of the opening sequences when cole meets sonia um you know they're going through all the lore on the wall and like all the 
random books and information oh, that yeah. she has to learn about to learn about Mortal Kombat. And actually, one of the characters that's on the wall is um, Nightwolf. Yeah, and that was, that was I, and I was just like, oh, okay, so I can see where they're going with this. They they can definitely bring back, you know, like characters or like new prequels or like you know have yeah, more relations. Make come their out, own so. cinematic universe. Exactly, and that's the way I felt like by watching it. I was like, oh, this is going to turn into one of that. Like, if it does well, like probably financially. So yeah. like, they'll definitely put more money behind it. Yeah. So yeah, it it felt very. I wouldn't. It felt very like not studio notes because it's like there was like Justin Lin behind it. It was like you know really creative people, but it felt very like. I mean, some of it felt very like obvious and like it's a corp. It's a movie coming from like a corporate machine, but like you know, it was just very like, all right, I see what you're trying to do here. It's like, hey, you're setting this up for like a sequel. It's like, you yeah, know, it's exactly. like, yeah, it's just like, hey, like that's fine, but like do it like in a an organic way, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it definitely felt like, um, I guess, and it's kind of interesting because well, like, uh, you know, uh, NetherRealm Studios, the people that produce or and make Mortal Kombat, yeah. you know, is owned, owned by Warner Brothers. Oh, yeah. So, so, you know, you definitely get that vibe. And I can totally see because like in the current Mortal Kombat games, you're going to have, uh, you know, you have like uh, characters like Rambo's in it now. Uh, yeah. You have Terminator. <laughs> Terminator, you Predator, have... Alien. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. I'm not sure if you heard I can that. See, jo- I, I, can see Cole, I can see Cole coming into this like as yeah, a DLC Cole, character. Yeah. I don't know if you heard that joke, but it, it went viral on Twitter. Someone was like, man, like the new DLC characters from Mortal Kombat or like if my dad chose the con- the characters for Mortal yeah. Kombat, like he was just like, oh, I'll put Rambo, I'll put Terminator in there. It's like, it's it's cool, but it's like, yeah, it's totally like a <laughs> what your dad would use or something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and who else is on there? I, I think they have Sarah Connor also, right? No, she's not in there. Oh, no, like... Sarah, Connor's, Sarah Connor is in uh, Gears of War. Gears of War, oh God. <laughs> yeah. They have Joker, Joker's in there. Yeah, Joker. Yeah, they have like the weird, uh, like uh, Justice or uh, was it um, Injustice Joker yeah. looking dude? Imagine if it was like the Heath Ledger or not the Heath Ledger, like <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Oh man, that movie. We have to talk about that movie because it's like he's that movie. <laughs> kind of like it's just like like oh man, that's not here or there. We won't talk about Joker. <laughs> Maybe after. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, I'm, like. It feels like that way. It feels yeah. like a setup. Yeah, it feels like a setup. Like, hey, I see what you're doing here. Um, but yeah, this is like it, it's very video gamey. Like, it feels like you know, it feels like you like. I love the fact that like you have like Kano saying Kano wins. Like, or like someone's who says like I forgot what does uh, Kung Lao say or Luke? oh flawless victory. Flawless victory. <laughs> it's like it's so yeah. stupid, but like they they went like they really, they really committed to this like. They committed to it and it's like hey like i have to give them credit for that they know what movie it is they know what they were trying to do if it worked or not i think most of, right i think maybe like 50 percent of the time and then the other 50 it just kind of went there eh. yeah I, after a while it feels like just forced fan favor at that point yeah. it's like like you have like shang Tsung would be like your soul is mine it's like yeah, yeah like, like, yeah. like, a, like <laughs> you yeah. didn't have to do that you could just suck his blood and it would have been quicker if yeah you like, didn't say it. that <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i think like the movie definitely probably needed another script revision or like some better like you know maybe just another thing because these are like justin Lin, you know like i think he's you know i thought like you know the fact that they had him as on producer was like awesome you know mm-hmm. yeah yeah and it, it, it felt like a safe story like you know like it wasn't anything too crazy or too out there it was just something that they can get behind and it was like you know Something that again that does fan favor and it point it, it just points out like we're gonna have really cool fight scenes, a lot of gore, and mm-hmm. you know updated costumes. Yeah, to, oh. to match the video game. Yeah, excuse me, excuse me. I, my apologies to the listeners. I said Justin Lin. I meant James Wan. My apologies. Yeah, yeah, James Wan. When they say Justin Lin. Um. Anyway, uh, yeah, this was like, um, yeah, I don't know. It felt very, you know, eh. but I mean, positive aspects because you know we don't want to just. Yeah. Yeah yeah it was a fun movie like i had uh, i enjoyed watching it like i was you know uh if you haven't seen it yet you know like for me it was a little like heartbreaking to see sub-zero as like the main villain yeah. you know it's like don't uh, do my boy like that kind of and i was also a little like uh you know like but it was entertaining like i enjoyed 
you know, seeing a little bit more of like a, cause like when you look at like the other Mortal Kombat movies, like the first one, and then you look at Annihilation, like, you know, these characters like Sub-Zero, Scorpion, they're kind of kept as like second tier type of actors where like, yeah, they make an appearance, they show, they fight and that's it. Like this time they actually had some lore that went into the backstory of like who Sub-Zero was ish and who Scorpion was and how he came to be. So that was yeah. kind of like, I, I, I appreciated that. Because, yeah. uh, like, again, in the previous movies, they're kind of just kept as, like, backdrops. It's like, yeah, they're going to fight, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I liked, like, Jax. I thought they handled Jax really well. I mean, the fact that they, like, really showed that, like, yeah, like, Jax is a paraplegic um, individual. And, like, kind of seeing how that affects him and also kind of, like, giving that, like, representation to that sort of particular community. Like, that was, you know, good intention. You know, mm-hmm. that was, and they made Jax like, you know, you know, that was perfectly cast. I think the Sonya was mm-hmm. pretty well casted. I think, I think the casting for this was fairly good. You know, I mean, these are a lot yeah. of like actors, you know, that really fit the role. You could say that. What do you think about Kano, like in general, like as oh, an actor? Uh, the actor dude, like that, that guy was like Arnold in Batman and Robin, where he knew what type of movie he was in. He just hammed it the fuck up. I love Kano. Yeah, Kano yeah. like steals the show in this movie. <laughs> he does. He yeah. Does. And you know, I wasn't expecting that. I was, to be honest, I was kind of expecting like Kung Lao actually to like kind of steal the show because, you know, from a game standpoint, he's a huge fan favorite, and I mm-hmm. thought he was gonna have more of like a hardcore role, uh, in terms of like dialogue and stuff like that. Yeah, and like Shaolin monks, like that's like a big like story plot. Those two characters yep. in the whole franchise, like they're big characters and i don't know if they kind of like not dropped the ball but like i think like Wu kang and kung lao didn't get enough love i mean when yeah, the show and, up, it was cool you know my wife and i were kind of talking about it and we're like you know if you think about it like you know raiden himself also didn't have that much of a say so in the movie either yeah. you know even though he's supposed to be like this overbearing lord oh yeah you know raiden was just kind like of, yeah raiden like, i'm here yeah, because like I would say like Raiden's kind of like Old Testament God sometimes. Yes, yeah. <laughs> good way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, he's like he's kind of like New Testament God. He's just like around, but it's like eh, I'm not gonna show up and have my son yeah. go to Earth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and you know it was like you know like uh it was just kind of interesting. Like the only thing like Raiden really did throughout the whole movie was just open up like portals for you yeah. to go back and forth. <laughs> interesting because it's like well i guess we'll, we'll talk about the original movie for a sec but like raiden in that uh, 1995 movie i think you're right 95 95, yeah, 95. okay i yeah. just pulled that up um like they raiden was like very like you know in the plot i think he was played by a carradine right One of the uh, he was played by christopher lambert Oh, okay. Why did I, why did I say David? Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm like having a bad day today with like remember names. But anyway, like, you know, Lambert plays him like, you know, he's like, he's a presence in that movie. And I felt like Raiden was just kind of around. And I don't know if you remember from the first movie, Lord Raiden, uh, he kind of kept like Shang Tsung in check. Like he'd be like, oh, you can't do this. No, you can't do this. And he'd be like, I, you know, he would even threaten him like, oh, like don't touch him. And like little electricity comes from his finger yeah. and all that stuff. And Shang Tsung would be like, okay yeah he's afraid of raiden because it's like yeah we're going to we're, we're doing like random like biblical analogies but like raiden is like god and then like shing sun is basically like the devil like he just tries to get away with stuff right yeah but in this movie like shang Tsung just keeps on saying i'm gonna break. he literally says i don't have to follow your rules and raiden's like okay <laughs> yeah it's like oh yeah i guess he, he doesn't have to it's like oh well <laughs> he beats me um yeah but yeah, I don't know. I thought like the way they use Reptile, even though Reptile's like in there really fast, like that was cool. They just made Reptile like the lizard from Spider Man or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Kano is great. Like just seeing Kano, like his little blast is like cool. Cabal, <laughs> Cabal is just like perfect. Yeah. Guru, Guru was like. Or, oh, Goro. Goro, excuse me. Yeah. Prince Goro. And like, yeah, yeah just like seeing those guys they they really had a time to shine and they got like their due that's just wish the other characters could have been good and um scorpion too scorpion when he was in there he, you know not of scorpion but like they did him pretty well i felt and pretty yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they they definitely did 
um you know i was like again i was very taken back by the whole sub-zero scorpion story that they were doing because you know normally in the uh, the universe of uh, mortal Kombat, you know uh, scorpion is very much a part of you know uh uh outer world you know, like he fights for outer world. He doesn't fight yeah. for the humans. So I was kind of taken back that in the movie, he leans towards, I don't know if he leans, but he's just more like a nomad-ish. He's like, I don't really have a place yeah. to call home. I I mean, yeah, we didn't see enough of him to like really like. Exactly. Yeah, but I felt like he was like morally gray where he just cared about his lineage or his family and like, you yeah. know, fuck the rest. So Exactly. It was and interesting. It just so happened to help out. It just so happened to help out Earth Realm. Yeah, I guess. exactly. Yeah, yeah. But um, hmm. like, I don't know what else to say about this because it's like, well, we'll see how it does. Um, you know, with I, I don't even know how to like how movies like are successful now in this like COVID era. Well, obviously, I guess box office, but then like I'm sure they have the numbers. How many people mm-hmm. like logged in? So I guess we'll see. I mean, I'd like to see Johnny Cage and like just. You- subscription numbers increased during the time of release yeah Yeah, like it was like it's we're living in this new world it's so interesting but yeah i mean i love james wan james wan's like you know love everything he does i love aquaman so you know maybe he'll do the next one i don't know it'll be free so i would give it like a second chance even though this movie wasn't perfect yeah that's why i'm gonna watch it again i'm gonna like rewatch it now and like you know be like okay now that i've seen it i'm gonna like just observe see if there's anything else i missed stuff like that yeah um I don't know if there's just, there, there was one thing in the movie that uh, kind of caught me off guard uh, that didn't make sense to me. Um, okay. Was, uh, do you remember uh, in the Scorpion Sub-Zero scene, like at the end? Uh, yeah. You know, they're in, they're in the original gym where yeah. the movie starts. <laughs> they're literally and, in a fighting arena. <laughs> well, not only that, but I don't know if you recall, but like the exact like next day, like, you know, nothing's broken they're back in the gym and like oh, everything is fine <laughs> yeah continuity issue right there uh, yeah so yeah. and i was just like wait like is no one going to talk about like the like giant blocks of ice that were everywhere like nine hours ago <laughs> <laughs> they had a cleanup crew i don't know maybe earth maybe like someone from out you know the realm helps them out uh, i don't know yeah um but yeah i was gonna say also this I don't know if it's a mandate at Warner Brothers, but like it worked enough for Godzilla versus Kong, but like the two, the under two hour like runtime of all these WB movies, you felt like very like rush or like not enough time to breathe. And like if maybe there was like a Snyder cut version of this movie, obviously not four hours, but like maybe two, maybe it would work as like two and a half. I don't know. There's nothing well, wrong with like long run times too. If the pacing that- and the editing, you know. Puts that actually might film. be a thing though like uh i was reading before i saw the movie that there's actually a bunch of fight scenes that didn't make it into the movie oh uh, <laughs> so uh, it was cut down so maybe we do have a three three and a half hour version yeah. of, of the movie somewhere yeah maybe maybe it's out there dude find it like uncover it like all the atari et cartridges and like the mojave desert <laughs> or whatever whatever desert that was in yeah yeah where like you know because it they single-handedly like destroyed the gaming industry for a while so they just <laughs> had to throw it out back yeah no it was, that's that's like the craziest like decision i've ever heard of like that's that's crazy but um mortal Kombat, um you know i would say i mean there's not really too much to watch now if you want to see it see it like enjoy yourself um you know it's a dumb summer blockbuster movie like you know, um, it's 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 not you know it's not a Citizen Kane, but hey, take it for what it is. Yeah. If you want to like zone out for two hours, like I did, perfect yeah. movie to do that. Yeah. Um, how would you rate like you, you know out of the three Mortal Kombat movies, you know the first one, Annihilation, and this one, which one do you like so far? Oh, I haven't seen the the animated one, the Scorpion one. Oh uh, yeah, I haven't seen that one. But I, okay, I, I just saw that it was on HBO Max. Also. Yeah, I know. I need to watch it. I would still rank the original one like up there and then this one and then Annihilation all the way down. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 Annihilation is just like, like if you, if you really are into dumb fun, you watch that one. <laughs> like, well, Annihil- Annihilation, there's some stuff that has come to light where they, the, the studio really messed that production up. Like it's unfinished. They took it out of their hands. There's a whole backstory, but 
I guess the other the other point I wanted to make, well, it's cool that we at least got to see like another Mortal Kombat movie because these movies are like in development hell. Like there was the Machima stuff that they did, but they wanted to do more of. Like it feels like it's kind of like low-key cursed in a way or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm glad it came out. I think it's it's vital. Like, you know, as someone that's a big fan of the series, like even though the new movie didn't, to me didn't live up to the first one, um, it's still something I appreciate as a fan. Like I watch it just because I'm a fan, regardless of like how the story is or anything like that. Like, you know, I go back for the fan. I, I go back to see the characters and, you know, just to kind of give me that nostalgic kick that, you know, I crave once in a while. Definitely. Definitely, dude. So, I mean, you know, try to stay positive about movies. You know, I don't like hating on them, but yeah, it does have its faults. So it's at least good to talk yeah. about it, but. It, it's yeah. a fun watch. Like I, I would recommend it that way. If you have two hours to kill, you have nothing to do put it on you, you you might enjoy it yeah there you go hey that's a good one. <laughs> that <laughs> perfectly sums it up and i guess with that we'll wrap up um chris you know thank you for joining us it's uh, great to have you back i just i miss people so it's just <laughs> nice to talk we were talking earlier right? it's like man it's just nice to just talk to someone <laughs> it is <laughs> yeah. you know i love being around the people in my house and like immediate family once in a while but like it's nice to talk to other people yeah <laughs> um but yeah dude thanks for joining us so where can people find you at and if you, you know if you want to plug anything or any promotions have at it yeah um you know i'm on twitter if you ever need to find me you know i'm at seagull easy on on twitter you know that's probably the best way to get a hold of me um believe it or not i don't check my phone that often but i am on twitter a lot so that's <laughs> nice. way to do it. yeah yeah hey yeah and uh, anything you want to promote or anything or you might uh, be speaking no. too soon okay no not at the moment you know just you know if you guys if anyone is interested in video games and you know want to talk about video game hardware and like talk about like how to make your video game hardware better like you know drop me a line at um Siegel Easy, you know on twitter and you know we can talk from there awesome yeah this guy this guy he is uh an awesome dude and Always look up to you and everything. So I'd recommend anyone oh, to do that. You. Yeah. <laughs> um, you could find me on Twitter and Instagram, G9892. You could find the Waffle Press on Twitter at the Waffle Press, um, on Instagram at the Waffle Press Podcast. Um, we're on Spotify, iTunes, uh, YouTube, uh, and SoundCloud. I don't think I missed anything. Like, share, subscribe. Um, you could find something you like or, you know, maybe something you don't like. I don't know. Um, just subscribe anyway. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We've been professionally unprofessional. Bye.